Welcome to the Agile People FikaCast. We talk about how to navigate with agility in our organizations. Hi everybody and welcome to Agile People FIKA. We are meeting once a week where we um, talk about um, interesting topics and uh, we are inviting anybody who would like to join. Uh, but today we have some agile people here and we will today talk about agility in HR. How can HR use um, AI, I should have said, AI in HR. Yes. And now somebody is joining us, it's David. Great. Welcome, David, we say. Hi there, David. Welcome to the Agile People Fika. And anybody can join. This is just an informal discussion. So today's topic will be AI for HR. What does it mean for HR that we now can use AI for all sorts of HR-related stuff? And what will be the consequences? What are the risks? Um, things like that is something that uh, we would like to discuss today. So maybe uh, some of my teammates here would like to kick off um, with um, a question or um, uh, a thought. Maybe Martin, would you like to start? Uh, sure, I can try. Um... AI is everywhere right at the moment. It feels mm -hmm. like I use AI a lot myself. Uh, I talk and interact with chat GTP a lot to get some inspiration and thoughts. Um, so I'm sure any most things that we in our type of work do re needs and could make use of AI in different ways. Um, so yeah, we can we can, we can start with recruitment and talent acquisition. Maybe that could be a, a HR perspective, and uh, that could use AI. Maybe help to streamline recruitment processes and yeah, even finding people. Maybe I, I was thinking there there are some risks um, associated with using AI for recruitment. What what are risks that you can see? So one thing I remember seeing, it's a few years ago, of course, but Amazon, I think it was, they made a, an AI recruitment bot uh, that was there to uh, analyze and understand CVs. Of course, they fed the AI with data. It needs to learn based on some information. And the data that I fed it with was all the data that they had used to uh, recruit people. And when they did that, they also, as we do, all humans, we have our biases and our behaviors in how we view different people. So that was also, of course, added to the AI. And the way that AI behaves is that it sort of amplifies things so mm. what they got out from the result from that research at least was an ai that was super biased uh, not very good at seeing anyone except for white male individuals as a good candidate to any type of recruitment which is of course wrong uh, but if you amplify something that is what you get and i think that is a, a, a thing that we need to be aware of with ai in general, I know that the work has progressed, of course, since then, to, so that you can reduce the risk of that. But it's something that the AI engineers uh, constantly have to work with in order to mitigate those type mm. of biases and behaviors in the AI systems. Yeah. And, and yes, also the, that, yeah. is, that going through CVs is one thing, and and um, I mean there is some human interaction part of that as well to listen into to behaviors that could be subtle but still important when you 
when you hire people. So, so um, and of course, an AI maybe can learn that as well. But I'm just saying that there are things that are not factual, but more emotional that could be important as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't. It will take some time, but I saw that Tesla had a sales AI, where mm -hmm. which calls people who have been on the web page, put their email, um, uh, phone number there, and then it just calls that person and make the first call. They know that that person is mm -hmm. probably interested <clears throat> in buying a Tesla. Yeah, and then it talks to them. Asking them to come to to um, to a, a station where they can take a look at the car, and mm. uh, you can find it on the internet. It, it's very it it's not super fast. You can see that there's a uh, pause between when they it, it's actually thinking about what it needs to say, and when, but it's super slick, super real, very yeah. actually. Uh, yeah, is there an yeah. expectation? then and, and maybe just a wrong expectation that we think that ai is or we expect ai to be cleverer than it actually is you know mm -hmm. in that example that you gave there is you're asking people to look at cvs and you're asking them to say well you don't you don't exactly tick every box of every role that we're looking for but let me be a bit clever about this and say, well, you know what? I can see this job role, and of course, that's going to have those elements in it. So you've you've you're asking it to exceed that capability. Mm. Um, if I think about um, some of my career history, then with implementing technology, you always get that expectation that is greater than it is. So for instance, if we have a move to the cloud in terms of technology, then I, I've had clients say, oh, well, it's just a whole load of little robots just running around, you know, processing these transactions end to end, and I don't really need to do it. All I need to do is just, you know, oversee it, align it, um, you know, and um the the end results produced and I, I didn't really have to do do much around that so there was an expectation that only jump in if something goes wrong but hey the robots will take care of it because they're clever enough to do it mm. but there i really think hr plays an important role because if you only leave this to the engineers uh, you will not get the same because you need to involve people who have uh, understanding and knowledge about the human behaviors. Mm. And, and one thing I can see, because today in some recruitment processes, you use like a, a personality test or IQ test or these kind of tests. So if you don't say yes, or if you don't qualify on this, you go to the <laughs> goodbye mm. box. Uh, and um, I would say many of these candidates could still be a candidate for the position. So I think it's how you um, design the, 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 the selection phase, uh, because in AI, with AI, you can use so many more parameters, mm -hmm. which you don't have in your head today. And, and, and you can also, if you do the right design, you can also, uh, eliminate some biases we have, for example. I think uh, age discrimination, ethnicity uh, could be one, religious uh, could be another one, uh, which you will take more away because people might have some, wear some things on their head, which can be <laughs> uh, discriminating in some aspects for someone, uh, while you don't see this with uh, AI. I, I, yeah. yeah, I think that's that's a good good thinking. I was thinking my my continuation of that thought was that recruitment does not need to be that reductionistic. I, I mean, we use mm -hmm. IQ tests and other tests in order to it's it's a reductionistic way to um, if make the recruitment process more efficient. But when you make things efficient, you also risk of missing things that's important. Yeah. And AI could interview people, potentially. Yeah. 
yeah. as a first input and gather the data and, and make it easier for the human to yeah. make informed decisions instead of just using mm. IQ tests. Mm. Yeah, but, but also another thing is what you say, but also today we, we do a lot of recruitment based on what you have been doing in your mm. former positions. Exactly. It should be a little bit, this is the position we have, what would you like to do if you got the job and you could start describing how you could see the organization, how you could see the job, how you could see whatever <laughs> that is important, depending on the job. Yeah. 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 Instead of only basing it on past experience or, yeah, mm -hmm. a good addition. Yeah. What would you like to do for the future, you know, and how would you like to contribute to our vision, our purpose, our goals, and what do you, what can you bring to the table here? Yeah. I guess it, it comes it comes down to how we want to use AI and which decisions we leave to ourselves and what what, mm. what the support is we're asking for. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I still I see it, AI very much in its infancy in, in that respect that it's not in, it's not trying to take over your job in its entirety. It's taken over the the I guess the the heavy heavy load or the you know the the standardized type processing and so leaves that skill to the human being who actually operates it whether it's in the design phase or whether it's in the out, output that comes it's still ultimately going to be your decision you're not asking ai mm -hmm. to to be a decider for you it's merely an enabler mm -hmm. and, and i think it's a good good thing that um you know at this stage you know you're not really going to have that abuses or 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 real um requirement for regulation because you know you're still in control of it it's not that technology is driving you it's the other way around you're still in control of of what you need it to do now there's a, there's a conference actually happening today um I, I, I don't know where it is and they're talking about that very thing listen i know we're all talking about ai i know we see it as a threat to you know terrorist threat or 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 you know um other other abuses that could come but it's 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 about calming down you know we're still very much in control of it and we use it for what we need to use it for yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get it wrong sometimes, but hey, that's experimentation. You know, we just keep working with it. It's, it's, it's there as an enabler. Yeah, yeah. there used to be a, a, um, a role called computer. That was a person. That was, yes, absolutely. Mm. We don't have that anymore, but people are still operating and using computers to mm -hmm. do their work. Mm. Yeah. So... And uh, I use a calculator sometimes. I don't do all my math in my head. Uh, it's very good to have a calculator, actually, <laughs> even though it's in my phone <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, but then then you know how to use it. But uh, what I fear a little bit with the HR systems that will come is that you use your traditional way. And you take a workday or success factor process and you build it into IE instead of starting with from scratch and yeah. think, mm -hmm. how can we do this differently? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I saw that recently as well, Ingle. I was at a work human conference back uh, early in the year, and they did exactly that. Their AI tool was on performance reviews. They, they started off with a blank sheet of paper for everyone. And it was literally, can I get AI to write me a, a bog standard um, performance review, you know, make it professional, make it funny, make it serious, make it whatever, and then it generates the text. And for you as the human, then go in and, and then you personalize it. So it's basically just taking that, that blank sheet of paper, generative text to say, oh, well, I like that. That's that's pretty good. But let me just reshape it in terms of the role that we're actually looking at and the, the way that that pe person performs in the role. And so you're you're still using that human skill of personalization because you know sometimes when you try to write um, a performance review and we've all done it, whereas you're having to write from scratch and you're you know you're ripping up the paper and throwing it away and scribbling more and all that sort of stuff. You know, generative text is is just doing exactly that, and then your manipulation there afterwards is is intended, I guess, to be fairly minimal. Yeah, I, I use ChatGPT. 
as a sounding board. I just bombard it with my thoughts, a lot mm -hmm. of different things, different perspectives, and I ask it to, okay, can you write something about this? <laughs> and then I get a very nice and tidy. It doesn't. I don't always agree with what I see, but yeah. it makes some sort of order of the things that I have in my head. With a mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. convenient way to, and much faster than if I need to write it down myself. Mm -hmm. I could have done it, but it's much faster doing it together with Chat UTP. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's so, so can we move to a topic outside of recruitment for HR? I, I have a list of things that I would like to show and see if there is some topic that you would like to discuss more in, in detail. There are some examples on, on this picture that I'm showing now, uh, how you could use AI for uh, HR. So is there any specific uh, box that you would like to uh, to comment on or deep dive more in uh, of these specific tasks? Because when you ask um, ChatGPT uh, about in what areas will, um, will uh, AI change HR, then it will just mention all areas, but this is a little bit more specific. It's not uh, performance management or or uh, learning and development or talent management or employee engagement, but it's more, you could do this specific thing. Um, and I like that a bit better. Um, could, think, could, think. Could, could I ask then, um, Pema, because I'm looking at a number of these and they're all kind of data driven of a fashion because the data exists and then you could easily pair um, what you need to do to drive that out. If I was looking at the one that one that jumped out with me immediately was nurturing the company's culture, mm. just because I don't believe that that would be data-based and, and, and therefore easy to determine. Yeah. It's probably based on, on uh, data that we are feeding it with. What are the values that we would like people to do more of and so on? And then it will send out little uh, nuggets or messages maybe, or I don't know how it works, but you could imagine uh, that we are feeding it the culture that we want. And then we ask it to, what are your suggestions for how we could work with that, for example? Uh, and increase those values. I'm thinking that many of these, let's say, the analyzing the state of employee engagement, for instance, as well. It's it's, and I see it in others as well. It's an it's a possibility, I guess, to to get AI to supervise or to measure the health of the system we're working in. So, what is the flow of the company? What are the behaviors? and map that to culture maybe at the end. So mm -hmm. if if someone is keeping track of how are all the delivery teams, for instance, uh, if you're in IT set up, so how are they performing? How are people acting in the system? How much wait time do we have for decisions? You could get the good overview of how it's functioning, I guess. And then if you could connect that to cultural behaviors, maybe you can draw conclusions about that and, and try to nudge the system in, in another direction or highlight things. Bottlenecks, for instance, could be one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could also, you can use, like we said, you I use it to create text. You can create personalized uh, information that's more mm -hmm. attuned to specific people. Uh, connected to the company's culture that is more appealing to them, even mm. though it's the same thing, but it's more directly aimed to a specific audience. That's yeah. something you can get help from from AI, I think. Uh, mm. but then, no, um, yeah, I don't know if it's super connected here, but maybe you can even do leadership coaching or leadership trainings using AI. I've seen... Uh, different type of coaching tools that is using uh, AI in order to train people to be better coaches, for instance. They are starting to pop, pop up to pop up. And that could also, of course, n nurture the company's culture. 
Mm. I actually asked Chat GPT. Okay. <laughs> and they said <laughs> it can facilitate communication, boost employee engagement, personalized learning and development, diversity inclusion, employee well being. So it's a lot of these things. Uh, fostering innovation. Yeah. But I can see one of the things I can see is really the first one, facilitating communication, because there you can do a lot uh, and personalize it a little bit to, to, to me as an individual. Uh, and also, you know, uh, company, new processes, new values, best practices. Um, and you can feed a lot of information and, and, and they um, tailor uh, the messages to, to, to a department, a whole company or individually. Mm -hmm. So what, what about our current uh, HR platforms or HR IT systems? Uh, what do you think, um, what is the current situation for them? Do they keep up with the pace here or do they still need to, to be more mature before we start thinking about buying new uh, IT platforms for HR? I think you start to see some good examples of, of where AI has been used in, in some systems. I think the larger ones uh, try will try and adapt. Uh, not sure how they will succeed. They need to think a little bit new, I think. But but um, it's a lot of knowledge also in these companies that you can use. Uh, I presume. Mm. But I think that in the future we will see new companies that are not there today or or not known at least. They might have started there. Yeah, maybe building AI into the platform from the beginning. And then, of course, it's much easier to, mm -hmm. to make it work the way mm -hmm. you want it to work. Um, definitely. And I, I think also you can use this because um, not everyone wants to be employed. Some people want to, to be freelancers. So I think you can use this also to build in uh, when to use freelance competence and when to use internal companies. I think it will, I think it will be a more. Uh, we will not have these standard roles in the future. It will be more that we pull the competence or the skills when we need it. Uh, mm. So any HR system that I've seen is is never really fit for purpose in terms of a wholly integrated solution for the many components of HR. And so as much as they, they try to do it, what it sounds like is that either AI is going to help improve, streamline that standardization within a one product, or it's still going to reside as a, a best of breed applications. And, and so therefore, with the fluidity or the the, the, the unknowns of, of an HR type role in the future, um, maybe that's the way to go. And AI, you know, sits above that and and orchestrates, you know, um, the better ways of working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you already start to see that uh, you have systems that are good at performance or recruitment, and and that will probably accelerate more. I think yeah. I think these large uh, like work they success. I think they will struggle a little bit because of the pricing structure uh, and they know, need to do everything. Mm. Well, there will be more critique. Yeah. So for many years, there has been a consolidation in the HR system of the market and maybe it will mm. now go the other way, so to speak, that we will see mm. more best of breed solutions mm. powered by AI. Uh, that's a probable outcome. Mm -hmm. And because of AI, I think that is also possible now because it can grasp uh, several systems together, which was a little bit harder before, <laughs> because then you needed to have a good data warehouse uh, to make uh, that happen. The integration mm -hmm. would probably be easier also mm -hmm. to transfer mm -hmm. data between uh, different platforms. Mm -hmm.
There's been a lot of talk about the fourth industrial revolution and AI has always been one of those items that, that people talk about that is part of, of the fourth industrial revolution. So, so I, I, and I think we are only in the beginning mm. uh, yeah. of seeing that. So there will be a lot of disruptive, new, innovative tools and uh, ideas connected to AI um, also in HR, mm. so we we I don't think we can foresee what will happen actually. Mm. As usual, <laughs> yeah, as usual, <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess we see it more as an opportunity than a, a disruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, was, it will be destructive it will. for some companies. It will be it making yeah. traditional HR tools. And uh, I'm thinking about. They will still prevail, probably, most likely. But it's if compare with Airbnb, for instance, and the hotel business, when Airbnb managed to get into the business, it was quite destructive for the whole hotel business. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they are still there, and they've uh, adopted, adapted. I mean, to, the record business, but not all of them. And so it made other things change. And mm -hmm. I think AI will do the same. So summarizing the discussion, we think we will get rid of boring routine tasks pretty quickly. But mm -hmm. for the more sophisticated AI use or solutions, we will probably need to wait uh, some time. And the IT platform for, uh, for HR, the market there is somewhat immature still. And uh, but I would say whether we like it or not, AI is here to stay. And if you are in business, you need to relate to it. You need to adapt to it. You need to understand how to use it. And um, you can then, as always, as we do in agility, we run small safe to fail experiments and then we learn and then we improve. And this is the way we need to handle AI as well, is my take. Um, and we need to follow the development of the new HR tools that are uh, coming now, uh, because there will be more applications probably uh, that are being born, born, they are, that are <laughs> appearing yeah. now. Yeah. And a, lot, a lot will happen in the market during the coming years. But I think the most important thing is that we should have fun with it. We should try different things have fun and play and, and see uh, how can we get rid of the boring tasks first with the help of AI in HR. I agree to that. Good summary. Very good. Okay, so when do we see each other next time? Uh, Wednesday next week. I next don't Wednesday. Know if we have a topic yet. We were talking about uh, discussing team development so that might be a topic but we'll put it on the LinkedIn uh, feed as normal okay yes so next week um, same time Wednesday 3.30 CET maybe another time where you are we will see you again and uh, with that we thank you for today and thank you uh, all of us who have been here today and uh, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.